Welcome back. This is Mountain Man Dan. Please subscribe to the channel for more van life content or how to stay stoked. Reporting live from my gym parking lot, I just ate a nice afternoon New York strip, having some cold brew and about to get a workout in. That sounded weird. <laughs> but I am finishing up some of the stuff I was talking about the other day with my plumbing. I have gotten clean plastic tubes to now reinstall so all of the system that comes from the fresh water tanks to the sink and or the rear shower are now completely fresh, brand new and clean. If you have traveled in an RV or van for an extended period of time, you do collect some type of buildup, mineral based or maybe from just different water sources in your plumbing. There's a couple ways to go about that. I don't think I'm the world's authority on how to keep everything perfectly clean, potable, etc. But I'm typically getting water from clean sources where I naturally would drink from them anyways, and that normally makes me feel comfortable for myself and Coop. Say hi, Coop. He's down there. And it depends on how everybody feels with that, but typically uh, just to keep my gray tank, which doesn't collect a lot of water, I'll drop a little Clorox in there with uh, fresh water in there, and that's enough to clean that. But for me, I have some tubes, uh, the old tubes I'm gonna show you, and then the new tubes, here we are. And I'm gonna draw that out in a diagram so you can see what we're up against. So, this system is quite simple. I've shown you in previous videos, but I'll do a quick take real quickly. How about right now? Here is my system. So, I made some room in here by removing one seven gallon gray tank. But the rest of the system is two seven gallon fresh tanks which go straight to the sink, right there, to provide water right out of the faucet. So what I'm doing now is going to take plastic tubing from the pump back there, down to this ball joint which actually goes to my shower, and then reconnect it to the faucet above. I'm amidst figuring out how to get the pointing action with this camera from autofocusing to not go back and forth so sensitively, but I'm gonna draw so you can also see a diagram of the system itself, how simple it is, and how replacing these tubes in it are really easy. Okay, because this has been used before, this is a T-joint that's a part of my system. I feel like it could use just sort of a clean. So, I boiled some water, and God, I hope that doesn't melt, but that should be good for it. That should do some good cleaning, although I've already scrubbed it with some soap, I think that'll be a good top off. So, I'm now going to draw you a diagram of my system. Okay, get ready. So, the system, as I showed you below, has the fresh water, and then it goes to a pump. This is a style of pump that just needs a little bit of flow, which is allowed through opening up the faucet and then it's ready to roll and it provides the water. It's called a sure flow. So, water goes through these style tubes up to the pump. The pump then has two options. The pump is going to go out to this T-joint that I'm cleaning. So let's just put a T right there. From the T, it'll go from here out to my garage shower. So let's just say shower. And that flow is regulated with the, with the ball valve. And that's just a little spot that goes on to the tube and it's got, let's call it a switch, that rotates one way or the other to shut it or to open it. From there, we go up to the faucet. And we'll say that is here. So what I'm replacing is nothing from this side. I'll write that for you. This side. We are A-OK -okay over here. So to lay it out for you, and so you can see how dirty these things get from traveling, I and mean, you just get in there. I mean, sadly, what I would say is you sometimes you're going to taste this or you'll smell it in your water or you see it visibly when you're going under there and messing with the containers, grabbing your cleaners or whatnot, just looks like some buildup. I bet this is in our homes too. We just don't see it as often. So I like having these clear tubes because it's very easy to see. However, I think if it was opaque or you weren't able to see this, it would be way more challenging to notice. So from my pump, I have this little tube there. Let's actually give you some 
clean paper to see it. So from the pump, I have this tube going down, the, the T joint, I'm not gonna pull that out right now, but we're gonna have a T that it connects to, and it, it's sort of at an angle, but here's our T, and that goes down to the ball valve, and then as well, got this piece is a little more curved, and then that goes from the one side of the T all the way up to the faucet. This is an easier fix than most, but it does require just getting into some weird positions and then going from there. So I've got all of these tubes ready. This will be replaced. I bought a little extra in case I needed to trim or when getting on the pipe clamps and then uh, a little extra here in case it needed trimming. So we are good to go and let's get after it. It will not be, let's say, zoom out. May not be the world's most entertaining style of pipe swap, but I'm going to be repiping this stuff and I'll give you the best angle I can. To prepare and make this a little easier, I am scrapping all the old and getting, getting that out of the way. And what we'll have is our hoses laid out so they're ready to go right into place. And one thing I have found is with a little preparation so you don't forget stuff is you don't put these tubes and get them all situated around this T-joint, which can be really challenging or have these pipe clamps completely forgotten because pulling, this is why I buy extra in case, is if you end up putting the T-joint on early and then you need to get it off, it's quite hard, oftentimes easiest just cutting it off. So I go ahead and put everything on if I can in advance, especially in an easy to reach fashion because it is underneath the sink. I've got to get in there with my arms kneeling, sitting down or some odd position. So making sure it's accessible with a screwdriver, etc. So that is massively helpful for me and um, just getting everything ready. So trying to make sure I can get to it because I know I have gone back in there, whoops, to take it off before and boy has it been a pain to try to do so, which is why I like this stuff because if I can't reach it somehow, I can then cut it off. Okay, scrubbed this. On the outside, can't seem to get the extra color off. I suppose this is a cheap part too that I could replace, but after cleaning it, I feel pretty good about it. So I'll at least give it a clean and then maybe even double dip it with some boiling water just to make sure I do everything I can to get it clean. Cause the color seems to be stained on here a bit and the outside have absolutely abrasively scrubbed. So we'll see. All right, let the battle begin. It is so hard to get down in here. I've got the hat backwards, my jacket off, cause I don't want any extra crap to snag. So here we go. I'm quite stoked to get this rocking. Trying to figure out how to make this a good capture because it is hard to get down in this compartment. I'll just go for it and see what you guys see. Um, we'll go from there. There's a few things I'm going to do in advance. That's going to be put this T-joint in this smaller tube that's going to go right to oh dear this is firm maybe you should have heated the tube too just something i'm considering now uh oh okay so i got all all prep but now i can't really manage this put those things on because i can't grab it hard enough um okay i am going to put this in some hot water then all right so now that that's happening that'll be part of my solution that's nice and loose. Boom. Okay. Yeah, that helped a ton. Whoops. So that made it nice and easy. Probably going to do the same thing to this side. Let's not get too ambitious. I'll go ahead. I want this to cool also so it, it's not still expanded and then I try to tighten it on or anything. Wow. Okay, so <laughs> some of these aren't going on as easy as they came on. Came on or off. Whoops. So yeah, going to be a weird one. Going to do some troubleshooting. Tune out. Okay, I heated this one also. It's going into place. Whoa, that didn't sound good. Down here where I can reach it and get some purchase. Oh, whoops. Oh, okay. Already having some difficulties. This is great. Okay, so wrapping up other part of the T-joint. Uh, while it's out of the compartment, it made sense to me. So just tightening down these pipe clamps and then we should be ready to install in place. I can't figure out any sort of angle with tripod. So let's just put you in this compartment. Try to get a view from the screen. Decent. Clamps 
are on, relatively decent. Let's go first tube. We're going on to the water pump itself. Connected. Need some purchase. Pushed. We made it on. Okay. And pipe clamp in place. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. And it appears there's some better light. My lantern could help us. I was actually in a better position. You guys ever screw driven? Feels non dominant, huh? Crapola. Okay. Not, not bad, not bad. I'll take it. I could have swore this flathead was going in better earlier, but okay. Try my best. We've now got to go to the flange on the inside of this compartment that connects to the faucet. So that is here. Pass so that there. That's what I'm going to be going to. Woo! All right. Get you back into position. I am going to dip the tube in water again that's hot to get it ready to go over this piece. And here we go. Oh man, can't see anything. Oh yeah, we're on there. No problem. Oh no, it came right off. Maybe we don't need to go on that easy. Mm. Uh-oh, lost some parts. Okay, this took some massaging, some grunting. I had to change positions multiple times in order to get it all screwed back in, tightened, clamped, and dialed. But even though you can see some small creasing here and here, um, I'm okay with that because it is tightly in there and the pipes, I'd rather them be firm now because um, they should loosen over time with more thermal expansion of heat and cold where I travel. Um, and if for some reason it seems like there's too much crease, I'll end up coming in here and I'll trim an inch or two off of different parts of the tubes and just reattach um, and it, it, it can uh, seem to clear things up. But I'll end up sort of putting the putting the gray tank back in and then everything should fit and then I'm gonna do a water test. All right, an end of the day report. This was a massively deflating experience trying to change these pipes. Um, but clear plastic, uh, the clear plastic pipes have absolutely been changed and it's been fantastic. I have got them all uh, absolutely replaced. It looks fairly identical to the way it was, but dang, if I didn't have leak after leak after leak when I was doing the initial water test again, which is the deflating part. Because like the challenge of my fat turkey forearms getting in behind the sink right here is the, the, cha the absolute challenge is significant. So now after several water tests, I have been trying to dry this back out. What you're hearing is the heater. And I've also got a small space heater in here. So that's what's trying to dry out the wood through here. But ultimately I've gotten the whole system put back together. It doesn't look all that beautiful, but what you're seeing there is the black tube, which goes into the gray water tank. That's just up and being elevated, but everything else um, pipe initially, like I've gotten the ball valve joint already open again, it's flowing. And then there's our T-joint freshly tightened pipe clamps. Water from the pump, water to the T-joint, water up to the faucet. So we are back. But yes, it was not easy. And it's because of the tight space. It's just not easy to get in. And uh, without the best tools, like extremely long, thin flathead screwdrivers, yeah, it's really hard. And especially to wedge my turkey drumstick forearms into those spaces within a cabinet space like that where I can't lay. It sucked, but we're done. I've got flowing water again, fresh clean pipes, looks brand new. So excited. I'm sorry you had to see the underbelly of my water system in the cabinet. It's not beautiful in there, but it's also like looking at the area behind your toilet. Like it's not an area that's easy to make beautiful. So there it is. Anyways, I'm glad to have brought you through this. This is the uh, pipe dreams of van life. 
learning how to fix things and uh, go in stride. I'm at the gym and I'm completely fatigued, but I'm gonna go sweat and jump in the sauna, shower, and call it a night. This is Mountain Man Dan. Please subscribe to the channel and tell me what you think about this video or how much you think my water system could be upgraded. I would love your feedback.